today I have a trip. Today, I have a truly exceptional guest with us who is on a mission to revolutionize the world of health and wellness through an innovative approach that taps into the fundamental life force of the universe. Joining me today is Tom Palladino, a pioneer in the field of scalar energy with a technology that has the potential to transform the way we perceive and achieve optimal health. Tom. Welcome to the Transcendent Minds podcast. It's a pleasure. Thanks so much, Pete. Thank you. You're welcome. And your journey to scalar energy began during your undergraduate years, inspired by the brilliant mind of Nikola Tesla. Can you take us back to those early days of research and share any pivotal moments that led you to delve into the existence of an energy beyond the electromagnetic spectrum? Um, but the pivotal moment is this. Nikola Tesla was a genius. He developed scalar energy instruments, and we should be using his genius today. I'm trying to follow up on that technology that he introduced to the world. To, be, to illustrate, Tesla was the first man to work with scalar energy. I knew he was on to something. He was just so brilliant. And what those instruments could do was fabulous. The, the work functions, the output. The ability of those scalar energy instruments is fabulous. I work with scalar energy instruments today. I'll show the audience. I'm going to move my screen. This is a scalar energy instrument. And much like Tesla's work, these instruments have no moving parts. So you might ask, where's the kinetic energy coming from? The kinetic energy is from the sun and the stars. That's not an induction mode. There's no moving parts whatsoever. Why is this so exciting? We're beyond any type of mechanical engineering. We're going into the realm of tapping into sunlight, starlight. We no longer have to create the energy. We just harness the energy. The energy is from the sun and the stars. To be pithy about this, I'm working in the, the vein of Tesla, brilliant, the brilliant inventor, and I continue on with his work. I was there anything specifically that intrigued you about the concept of an energy that wasn't within the electromagnetic spectrum? How did it align with your scientific curiosity? I see the limits of electricity and I see the limits of fossil fuels. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to run out of electricity or fossil fuels. That simply means that they're limited in their capacity. In many ways, if you can access the energy of the sun and stars, you don't have to worry about time and space. You transcend time and space. So I can have this instrument function anywhere. I don't have to be near wind farm or a coal field, if you will. I simply access the energy from the stars. Now, that's perfect because we have to find a better way. I'm all about solutions. I am results driven. I want to see results and scale energy provides some results. There has to be a new energy paradigm. There has to be a new health paradigm. There has to be a new way of looking at our social order. The system is broke. I contend that scalar energy will answer many of our problems. Look, before we go into more about scalar energy and the lab work uh, that you're doing, I want to touch on Galen Hieronymus, because mm. in your exploration of scalar energy, you delve into the notes and instruments yes. uh, of Dr. Galen Hieronymus, a prominent researcher in the last century. Can you share more about your interactions with his yeah. work? And how did it influence the development of your own theories and instruments? Galen Hieronymus was an American inventor, and I had the good fortune to meet his family. I never met him. He was deceased. Right. But this instrument that I have in my laboratory is really a, an offshoot of his prototype, of, of his work. Galen Hieronymus started his career with electricity. He actually worked for the, the Kansas City Power Company. And later in his life, as private research, he discovered scalar energy, what he called aloptic energy. He's right, because there is another type of energy or skill. But not only is electricity real, but scalar energy is real. So I had the good fortune of not only meeting his family, but I could actually, back in the 90s, purchase a scalar energy instrument. It was a crude model, but nonetheless, it worked. And I was convinced that working with that instrumentation and being able to duplicate that's the key. If you can duplicate your result, you know you're onto something. It came to my attention that Galen Hieronymus 
had functioning scalar energy instruments that abided by the laws of science. And once you follow the laws of science, it's a done deal, so to speak. You realize it's going to work. You follow the laws of science. Those laws of science cannot be broken. That's where we're at today. I have dis discovered that this energy can indeed perform work functions. I've performed this work thousands upon thousands of times. And we're to the point now, we're ready to introduce this other energy to mankind. Were there any other aspects of his work that resonated with you and played a crucial role in shaping your own understanding of scalar energy? Now, Galen Hieronymus and his wife worked with NASA and they acquired the photographs of the Apollo 11 astronauts. And in so doing, with his scalar energy instrument, he could monitor the astronauts while they were orbiting the moon and while they were on the surface of the moon through their photograph. Now, obviously, the moon is a quarter of a million miles away. How is that possible? Galen proved that this other energy, scalar energy, is not inhibited by time and space. That scalar energy does indeed follow the laws of science. And in so doing, he could work through the photographs of the astronauts on the Apollo 11 mission, and he monitored their, their heart rate, the organ function. He monitored their biorhythms, so to speak, all through a photograph. I took that as scientific truth, it is. And today I work with people, not on the moon, but on planet Earth, through their photograph. How do you go about really incorporating and building upon Dr. Hieronymus's inventions, especially those that seem to have a profound impact on living organisms from vast oh. distances? Hieronymus was able to work with photographs of people, animals, and even plants, crops, farm crops. And in so doing, he was able to identify a microbe that person or animal or crop was afflicted with. And he was able to eradicate those microbes. I find that fascinating. And I followed up with his work and I developed a process where I can work with photographs of people. This is my photograph. And I can find a microbe in the quantum field. To be very clear, I only work with photographs of people. I never work with people. So people do not come to me physically. I work through their aura or their force field. And every time I can work through a person's force field, that force field reports a person's immediate constitution. If I have a particular bacterial infection, it's found on the force field of the photograph. Now, much like we're having a conference today by way of our computer, we can speak to one another in real time. I can speak to this photograph in real time. Again, not working with people, but working with their energy through their or their aura. And it's so successful because we're following the laws of science. The laws of science cannot be broken. I want to draw out more of the story of this as well for listeners so they can get a, a deeper penetration on this subject because you posit that scalar energy is instructive energy and yes. the universe is guided by this divine essence, if you will. Can you walk us through the development of these theories and how they laid the groundwork for your work in harnessing scalar energy for healing. I'd say Nikola Tesla was the first man to control scalar energy. And amongst other things, he could produce light, artificial light, sometimes 70, 80 feet in length. Or Tesla was able to broadcast energy and at a distance, he could illuminate a light bulb, much like this instrument can illuminate a light bulb locally. So I said to myself, that's incredible. This is information. Tesla, many times, he and his coworkers experienced the influences of this energy locally within their lab, and they felt better. They had a sense of euphoria. But sadly, a lot of that's been lost to history. A lot of that was not never properly chronicled. Along came Hieronymus and his family, and they likewise developed scalar energy instruments, and they had incredible success in working with for instance, farm animals, livestock, by way of photographs of farm animals, livestock, identifying microbes on those photographs of a farm animal and eradicating a microbe. The result was that cows had a greater milk output, that the horses were healthy, that the chickens were healthy, 
that pigs were healthy. So they had great success with livestock. Then Hieronymus started to work with people. And likewise, working through a person's photographic force field, they could identify a vitamin deficiency or they could identify the presence of micro and eliminate that micro, not by a chemical, but by way of intelligence. Hieronymus called this logoidal plasma, meaning the plasma of the universe that's guided by some type of higher intelligence. And he's right. So we're working with an information system. Everything in scalar energy is non-physical. There's not a proton involved. It's non-physical. So you say, what does it mean? It's consciousness. We're in the realm of consciousness. This instrument controls consciousness. If our mind can interface with consciousness, this instrument can interface with consciousness. In my laboratory, I have a consciousness instrument. That's incredible. When you were formulating your theories about scalar energy as instructive any energy, were there any specific observations or experiments that led you to these profound conclusions? The first day I was in the laboratory with the Hieronymus family, I had some type of bacterial infection, some type of congestion in my lungs. I wanted to try it out for myself. After working with myself just for 40 minutes, 50 minutes, my sinus is cleared up. My lungs cleared out. So I said to myself, the intelligence that I submitted myself to obviously had some type of impact on the bacteria in my body. Now, again, only working with photographs, I worked with my photograph in, the, in their laboratory because it's so much easier. This instrument is not designed to have a person sit in it. The instruments are miniaturized for photographs, and we'll see why, because obviously you'd be out of scale. Anyway, long story short, by working with myself for 40 or 50 minutes, I eliminated my sinus congestion that I had for a good week. I was convinced. I was hooked. Then I started working with the family and friends with their photographs. And what's interesting, I never ask people what they're suffering from. I don't claim that this is a medical device. It's an informational device. And I let the inbuilt information do what it needs to do. Apparently, what the model that Hieronymus perfected and that I copied is able to destroy, eradicate, remove, or negate a micro, a germ. And that's my claim today. I'm able to negate a micro. How do you see the uh, practical application of these theories in the design and functionality? of your scalar energy instruments. Point. So today in my laboratory, I not only work with myself, but I work with half a million photographs of people. And this is why scale is so important. And if I can scale down a photograph into a miniaturized photograph, then I could work with a million or two million people a day, as opposed to having a gigantic warehouse where people would come in and sit in front of an instrument. Right. I don't have the money to do that. Okay. I, I don't want, I don't want a million people a day to come to, to my laboratory. I, I can't accommodate them, but I can accommodate a million photographs. They're miniaturized. So what am I getting at? This is energy healing through a person's photograph. And you don't have to do anything except email us a photograph. I want this to be simple, easy, straightforward. What everybody in the world has a cell phone today could not be easier. This is the easy group. And you're, you're somebody that's embarked on a path less traveled and you've pursued independent study with scalar energy and clearly wasn't taught at university level. Can you share some of the challenges you faced during this independent study and how did you overcome them in your quest to understand and harness scalar energy? I first met the Hieronymus family in 93. And they introduced me to the working model. So then I finally had a working model. And I said to myself, now I have to go about this private study because this is obviously the path less traveled. To this day, scalar energy research is not entertained by academia. I, I was working closely with the Hieronymus family. They fought, and I owe a, a, a great deal of gratitude to them. And at that time, I had contemporaries back in 93 and 94. Since then, they're no longer with us. Everybody that I was working with has died. I'm 63 years of age. 
Well, actually, I'm, I was the youngest at, at that point in time. Nobody else has taken up this study because Dr. Hieronymus is no longer obviously with us, nor his family. So I'm the one, who, if you will, they pass the baton to me. I survive. I'm, I'm the only one that survives this, if you will, this genre or this, if you will, esoteric science. I'm trying now to, once again, revive interest in energy healing, quantum healing through photographs and force fields. And it's a challenge, but I'm up to it. What, what, what is really keen is this. It not only works, but it's easy. It's painless. You can't have a chemical reaction from a photograph. So there's no side effect, right? There's, there's no negative side effects. I never had a side effect from my photograph. The difficult part, the downside is people have never heard of this. This is so esoteric to this day. Because scalar energy is a term that many might be unfamiliar to. Can you enlighten our listeners mm -hmm. what about what scalar energy is and how it works with a quantum field to activate that innate healing ability of humanity, if you will. Right. We, we all have this innate ability to heal. Scalar energy is the energy of the sun and the stars. Take a look at the universe from a Mac standpoint. Where does the energy come from? Where is all the light coming from? The stars, not the planets. Planets are inert. Planets receive the light. The stars create the light. The light is the intelligence. So scalar light is scalar intelligence. All of the light in the universe is from the stars. All of the intelligence instructions of the universe is from the stars. The planets, we receive those instructions. Okay. Now, put all of this together. That's how important the science is. It's the instructions. It's the consciousness of the universe. This is why I am trying to inculcate to a wide audience. We finally have means and access to consciousness. Yes, you can do that through prayer and meditation, through thought. But now we actually have instruments that can duplicate the mind. This is a consciousness instrument. And whatever I think, I can duplicate through this instrument. And that's how I would imagine that this energy from the stars and from the universe can address over 400,000 pathogens, yes. including viruses and bacteria and fungi, parasites, which ultimately leads to healing and improved well-being. How, You're right. So how does scalar energy distinguish and target specific pathogens? Everything is by way of an instruction. Now, I've developed a technique that's foolproof. Again, following the laws of science, I'm going to hold up a photograph of a bacterium. This is mycoplasma pneumonia. Okay. The risk is in her lungs, you have lung congestion. Identify, and I instruct the instrument with a photograph. If I were to place my photograph next to this photograph of a bacterium, the two energy fields communicate. I know this sounds simple, but it works. And again, following the laws of science, if you follow those simple laws, you never get off that, that trend, you'll always be active and you always have a favorable outcome. The two photographs communicate. I download the intelligence of mycoplasma pneumonia into my force field. And in so doing, this instrument will look for the energy field of mycoplasma pneumonia inside of me in my quantum field. Understand the consciousness, the molecular structure of mycoplasma pneumonia and eradicate, remove that sense of consciousness, remove that signature on my photograph. So keep in mind, this is not a chemical process. I only work with photographs. My photograph is alive with energy. That photograph of mycoplasma pneumonia is alive with energy. The two photographs communicate. It's simple, it's straightforward, and it works because we follow the laws of science. Now, bear in mind, obviously, a photograph is a source of light. That's why I like working with photographs. Light never makes a mistake. Light follows the laws of science. Mm -hmm. It's inscrutable. So my photograph and the photograph of the bacterium communicate. It's a perfect communication. There's no human reasoning involved. And hence, with the, when there's no human reasoning, it's divine action. It's all divine instructions. It always works. It can never fail because I keep it with the light principle. Light never makes a mistake. I know that you share 
your own success story with Scale of Light. Can you elaborate on any success stories or specific cases where yeah. your scalar energy technology has made a significant impact on someone's health? We've been working with charities around the world. I've been working with HIV clinics throughout the world, and we're having incredible success working with these HIV clinics. Really quickly, I'll show you a photograph. This is a photograph from an HIV clinic in Delhi, India. It's known as Om Prakash. Now, we've worked with over 5,000 people at this clinic. And after working with these people, they tell us they no longer have a viral load for HIV. I've also worked with other clinics. Here's some photographs from a clinic in Tanzania. Now, every photograph, as I leaf through this report, every photograph is from a person who at one time was HIV positive. Now, every individual is telling us after they submitted their photograph, by the way, I've never been to Tanzania, after submitting their photograph to us, none of these people have a viral load for HIV. Everybody feels better. Many of these people have gone back to work and they're without pain. They're without, without the symptoms of HIV. So these are the test results that we're receiving. These are the testimonies from people around the world. Again, this is a report out of Tanzania in which everybody claims that they no longer have a viral load for each HIV. And how do you see the, the role of scalar energy in providing order in the universe, if you will? Everything has to have order. If you don't have order, you have a universe of chaos. Now, what's the best way to carry an instruction? with light, with energy. Mm. So how does the universe receive instructions? Through consciousness, which is light. Light is consciousness, consciousness is light. That, that's right. an equality, that's a, an equality. And that's the key. Once we understand that, Tessa called it non-physical science. He's right. Once we understand non-physical science, which are the instructions, then we'll understand the universe, which is the result of the instructions, the effect. So I'm going back to the first principle. And the first principle is light, instructions, consciousness. Let's not put the cart before the horse, right? The key is to work at, at the primal setting of nature, which is energy, light, consciousness. Again, I just want to break this down so it's simple for people, because I know what you're talking about is very simple, because I've had experience of this in previous conversations with you, but for listeners, just to re-emphasize this point in terms of remote healing and holistic well-being, because you're talking about treating, if that's the word, individuals remotely through a photograph and addressing unbalanced energy caused by stress and environmental factors and diseases. Can you explain how this remote treatment process works and its significance in promoting holistic health? Yeah, let, let's call it holistic health or energetic health. The key is this, our body is, is a composite of information, of instructions. Now, I've always thought that disease or some type of malady is improper instructions or the breakdown of instructions. So when I'm working with, with this instrument, I can impart what I call a brain balance or a brain reboot through this instrument. So really quickly, if I get my photograph, place it by the inch, that amount of light that's going into the light bulb to illuminate a light bulb is the identical amount of light or instructions going into my brain waves or to my chakras. Now, when that light, if you will, is downloaded into my chakras, it changes people for the better. People say they're happier. Their spirits are, are lifted. Some people say they give up cigarettes. Now, I have nothing to do with coaching people to give up nicotine. I don't understand that science. The energy has helped people kick the habit of cigarettes or recreational drugs, or the energy has made people happier. That's wonderful. But now, can you imagine a photograph would carry the consciousness of happiness or the consciousness to give up, say, marijuana or cigarettes? That's what I'm saying. We can instruct people to be happier or give up the instruction to be not only happier, but to give up, say, cocaine or some type of cigarette, well, that, that's all inclusive. The energy can do anything. How does scalar energy support longevity 
And what role does it play in possibly enhancing spirituality? Are there any practices or programs you'd recommend for individuals looking to experience the spiritual benefits of scalar energy? I always tell people just accept the energy. I firmly believe scalar energy is divine from God. And all you have to do is accept the gift from God. God is only going to help. God is only good. He's all good. First and foremost, accept this as divine energy. Keep in mind, this is not electricity. If electricity has something to do with the movement of electrons and some type of force field of electrons, there's not one electron involved in scalar energy. It's consciousness. Consciousness is not in a stream of electrons. What's my point? Consciousness is subtle essence. It's the essence of God. So the energy in and of itself should beget healthful living, should beget a proper spiritual mental attitude. That's the key to get away from chemicals, to, to get away from this physical interference, to go directly to the core of the matter, which is our instructions, our consciousness. Can you give us a tour of your lab, Tom? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll leave the screen around. Because I'm really curious and intrigued yeah. by this, the instrumentation as well. Yeah, this, this is the, uh, what I call the Ark. It's, it's modeled after the Ark of the Covenant. This is the strong instrument that allows me to balance chakras and to eliminate microbes. Okay, and then I'm, so, just, so, okay, so I give you a photograph of me, mm -hmm. all right? What, what then happens? Yeah. Okay. So at the end of the day, people submit photographs to me. And... I receive thousands of photographs every day, and I actually place those photographs on a collage, and I place them inside the instrument. Now, once a photograph is inside that instrument, it's enjoying the scalar energy environment. That's a very strong scalar energy environment. Let me demonstrate how strong. Well, I'm holding this tube, this fluorescent tube in my hand. It's in its factory package. And I ice this tube inside the instrument, you see the fluorescent tube is illuminated. That's the amount of energy going into a person's force field, into their energy. Okay? For one hour a day, I balance their chakras. The second hour a day, I eradicate microbes. I have the ability, I have over 400,000 photographs of microbes. So I can eradicate, potentially eliminate the consciousness of over 400,000 species of microbes. And then for the rest of the day, I work with nutrients. This is a photograph of vitamin D2. Now, keep in mind, everything I do is by way of quantum instructions. For 22 hours a day, I place a person's photograph by various vitamins and minerals and antioxidants. And in so doing, I can download those minerals and antioxidants into a person. All by way of a person's photograph. But it's energetic nutrition. It's not chemical nutrition. That's an overview. That's what I do on a daily basis. And it works on, on account of the fact that nothing can impede life. If I tell this instrument to assemble to, if you will, download glutamic acid, that's what it's going to do. That's beautiful. And how do people get in touch with you? In order to make this simple, I'm, I'm all about simplicity and, and being uh, a very, uh, if you will, accommodating. Uh, anybody in the world can visit our website. We give away 15 days of session. And we do that because this is new. I don't expect the world to understand this. This is a unique instrument. I'm the only one in the world with this unique approach because of the instrumentation. Scalarlight.com is the website. Anybody in the world can sign up for 15 days of free sessions. You're only going to send us a bus shot. All I want is the top of you. You don't have to have full body shot. And then we go to work. We will balance your chakras on a daily basis. We'll provide nutrients on a daily basis. You decide if it's a benefit to you and your family. I encourage you, get your family involved with their permission. I encourage you to send photographs of your pets. Your pets are usually a good barometer as to the success of quantum healing. Obviously, a pet is not familiar with a scalar energy apparatus. And do you have any parting words or, or a message? Yeah, the message is one of hope. We have a very good, gracious God. This is God's light. 
I want to share this invention with the world. My goal is to, to work with a billion people a year. So those of you in the audience, if you want to be part of our grassroots movement, just share our free sessions. The website always has free sessions. Why? Well, it's not designed to make money. It's designed to get the information out there. That's why we give away 15 days of free sessions. Join us. This technology will change the world for the better. We need improvements where I'm all about success. I'm all about performance. Scalar energy will change the social order for the better. Be a part of it. Tom, I want to thank you so much for sharing your profound insights into scalar energy and its incredible potential for transforming lives.